this is where we are with the mashup between the MP CNC and the Sol Silva machine. It's kind of an interesting looking CNC. I've got NEMA 17s for the Y and using a lot of parts from the MP CNC for these mounts. These are the pineapple couplers. I drew these up in Tinkercad. There's one on either side and that just holds that nut right there. I've got NEMA 23s on the X and the Z and the primary reason for the different steppers is because these are the ones I had laying around and rather than buying new ones I wanted to use what I had. We've got these trucks or these cars however you want to call them from the MP CNC. We've got two here and two on the other side. For the Z I'm using the box that I built for the Sol Silva, but it would be interesting and pretty straightforward, I think, to convert these to this axis as well, as whether the as well as the inside one. That might be a future project. This was drawn up in Tinkercad, just to hold that washer in there, or actually that bearing in there. I might need to do a little bit of a cap to hold that a little bit more captive. And last night I was doing some settings and getting some movement on the machine when my trusty Toshiba board decided to catch on fire. This has been a great board. This is the Toshiba 6560 and I've had this for years. I've used it on lots of different machines, lots of different designs, different builds and it's been a real workhorse. Wires in the past have gotten crisscrossed. I've had blue spark arcs coming out the the connection posts and all kinds of kind of scary things but it's always kept on working um, until last night so I was getting some movement on the machine and then a little puff of smoke happened and it got real interesting so when I looked on the bottom here you can see on the middle one here <clears throat> we've got some bubbling and some brown burn marks and I think we've got some burn marks on here too so since I like these and they're cheap, they're about $35, I've ordered a new one to replace this. And in the meantime, we're going to give something else a try. So something I want to try here, this is the control box that came with the 3040 CNC from a couple years ago. And the problem with this is the power supply on it died, which is pretty annoying. I've checked all the fuses and something in there has gone south. But what we've got in here is this controller board with the three axis pins. This is the spindle control as well as the power supply. They're all wired together. But we don't need this. Since we've got the power supply from the Toshiba board, I'm going to pull this out and see if we can kind of put this together and see what sort of results we get. This is the JP382A. There's not a lot of information about this online. The other issue with this is there's no dip switches, so I don't know what the stock settings are for that. With the Toshiba board, you could change the current, the decay, the step rate, all that stuff. So it'll be interesting to see what we get out of that. Let's pull that out and see where we are. Quick little solder, and we've got 24 volts going to the JP382A. We've got a positive light on there. So let's wire up one of the axes, change our ports and pins in mock because they're different from the Toshiba board, and see if we can get a little action out of one of these steppers. For the first test of this hack together system here, we've got just the Z running to the machine and mock. And as far as the connections here for the Z stepper. This is interesting. This was just the first stab at this. Um, just an estimate, a gut feeling on where these should go. And right out of the gate we've got some real nice movement on Z. So we're going to use these same order of connections for the Y and see what kind of movement we can get out of the Y. We've got the Y connected 
in the same order as the Z for the first one. And we have some real nice movement back and forth. Have to figure out some cable management here. But for right now, just trying to see how this, this moves. So we got some nice movement there. And we still have our Z, which is whisper quiet. Very surprised, very impressed how smoothly this is working. The next part of this will be for the two 17s, and I've got a little bit of concern on that because those are different motors with different, different color codes, different color schemes, as well as being smaller motors. But so far, this board is working well. We've got the X axis all wired up with these two NEMA 17s. I had to play around with the the order there to figure it out because it's different from the NEMA 23s but we've got all of our all of our runs working here let's take this off Pretty cool. The next thing I need to figure out is a way to control some of this whip at the end. So a bracket or something needs to be made on this side to hold these rods kind of in one place. These also came off the MPCNC. These were the other parts for the motor mounts. And what's interesting is these roller skate bearings fit perfectly in there. It's a really tight, snug fit. They pop right in. So this fits on there and some sort of bracket or mount can be built on this side to kind of keep those stationary. But right now, using this control board out of the 3040 CNC box, this JP382A seems to work really, really well. The motors are also a lot quieter with this board than they were with the Toshiba. The NEMA 23s are nice and cool to the touch. Very, very cool. The 17s are in no way hot, but they're a little bit warm. Everything is being fed with 24 volts. And we're moving along. Just working on dialing this in a little bit, I did do some supports to cut down on some of the whipping for these acne rods. These are the other parts from the MPCNC, the other motor mounts, and it holds those bearings perfectly in there. As far as the calibration for this, I'm getting my one inch test runs really really close the angles the 90 degree angles are looking extremely good another nice thing about this setup is if your angles are a little bit off you can hold one of these rods and then turn the other one just a little bit and kind of shift it and then once you get that set the steppers will hold on to it the next part of this project will be to get the spindle mounted on here I printed up this the other day. This was based on a design in Tink and not in Tinkercad, but in Thingiverse. And this was originally part of a holder for a Dremel. But I went into Tinkercad, did some adjustments, cut that off, and this will hold the 500 watt spindle pretty well. So still thinking of the design for this and trying to decide if I want to stick with this or go back to a regular router. The beauty of the spindle is how quiet it is. And 500 watts is pretty good for most of the stuff I want to cut, but the router does, does help out for harder things. In the meantime, let's run some code and just let this thing work for a little bit. Just do a little air cut test here.
Thank you.